Welcome back everyone. So today's problem is check your understanding question 25 from the thermal physics chapter. So in the question we have two heat insulating pistons that are connected by a spring and it can slide without friction inside a horizontal heat insulating tube which is open at both of its ends. So basically the both the pistons and the tube uh, are heat insulating which means no heat can either enter or escape to or from the surroundings now we have one mole of monoatomic gas that is that is filled between the pistons and its initial at a temperature of t1 at this temperature of the gas the spring is not relaxed if an amount of heat is supplied to the gas its temperature becomes t2 and the length of the spring becomes eta times its initial length if that's the case how much heat is supplied to the gas and that's the question okay so give this problem a try guys then check out the solution okay so first let's start by writing down the relations that we are familiar with so firstly we can write down the ideal gas equation of the state uh, in both states state 1 and state 2 so initially we can say p1 v1 equals nrt1 and in the final situation we have P2 V2 equals NRT2. Okay, here P and V are obviously the, the pressure of the gas and the volume occupied by the gas in state 1 and state 2. Okay, so now let's talk about the spring. So firstly, we can say that the length of the spring is L1 in the first equation and the extension is something else, which is let's say X1. So obviously, as this is a cylinder, the volume is just going to be L1 multiplied by the surface area of the piston in the first situation so v1 we can write it in terms of l1 as well okay and x1 is going to be the extension in the spring so for the second equation uh, we can write down the force balance on this piston so we can first of all consider some external force on the piston because of the surrounding air so i'm just going to consider the surrounding pressure as p0 uh, as it was not given so it will be p0 times s so this is the force acting on the right side of the piston and from the left side uh, we obviously have the force that the gas exerts on the piston, which is going to be the pressure of the gas, which I am writing it as Pg in this situation, multiplied by S. And then we'll have the force with which the spring is pulling on the piston, uh, which we can write it as K times the extension. Okay, so if you just balance the forces in case 1 and case 2, then we can say P1 is going to be P0 plus Kx1 divided by s so i'm just considering the initial extension as x1 and similarly in the final situation p2 will be equal to p0 plus kx2 over s so the second set of equations we have obtained using the force balance in the pistons in the initial and final situations okay so now let's just write down an energy balance equation okay so now we ultimately had to figure out what was the heat that is applied to the gas so let's say that supplied amount of heat is some Q. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the pistons, the spring and the gas as a system. And then uh, I'm just going to write down the energy balance. So the heat Q, first of all, it changes the internal energy of the gas, right? Because it's going to increase the temperature of the gas and which means the internal energy of the gas is also going to change. And secondly, we can see that the spring is being elongated. So the work done in, in elongating the spring that we can write it as a change in potential energy, which that we can say it is delta U spring. And another thing is that uh, if you guys observe, there is an external force that is acting on our system, which is the atmospheric pressure. So when the piston is going to expand, so the piston on the right is also expanding and the piston on the left will also expand by the same amount. So if you observe, we are also doing some work against the atmospheric pressure. So we'll also have to consider the work done against the atmospheric pressure because that's an external force that is acting on our system right okay so this is our energy balance relation okay so now we can write down these terms one by one the term delta u is the most straightforward so this as the function as internal energy is a function of the temperature for an idle gas so delta u is just going to be n cv delta t now as the gas is a monoatomic gas the value of cv is going to be 3 r by 2 so this is going to be 3 r by 2 times t2 minus t1. So this is the change in the internal energy of the gas going from state 1 to state 2. Okay, so now the work done against the atmosphere is also pretty easy to write. So as it's a constant force, we can just write it as force into displacement or we can also write it as the pressure multiplied by the change in volume. Okay, so the work done against the atmosphere, we can just write it as P naught times the change 
in volume. Now the thing is, uh, let's just say for a second that the volume of the gas changes by delta V. So the right piston sweeps out a volume of delta V by two. So this swept volume is delta V by two. And similarly, this volume swept is also delta V by two. So it's just going to be P naught times delta V by two plus P naught times delta V by two, which is just P naught times delta V. So the work that we are doing against the atmosphere is going to be P naught times delta V. Okay, so that's the W atm term. Now the change in the spring potential energy. Okay, so that is just half K X2 squared minus X1 squared, where X2 and X1 are the in final and initial extension in the spring. Now the thing is, we don't know the spring constant. We don't know X2 and X1. All these are variables. So we have to figure them out using the relations. So what I'm going to do here is write this thing as half K times the sum of X1 and X2 multiplied by the difference of X2 and X1. Okay, so now if you observe K times X1 plus X2, that we can just get by adding these two equations that k times x1 plus x2 term would be p1 plus p2 minus 2p0 multiplied by the cross-sectional area s and then what is left is the x2 minus x1 term and here if you observe something um, if we take out this p0 and multiply it with the other things what we are getting is p0 multiplied by s into s2 x2 minus x1 now as s multiplied by x2 minus x1 is just delta v right because the x2 minus x1 is the amount by which the spring extended. If you multiply that with the cross-sectional area, we'll get the change in the volume of the gas, right? Or the change in the volume of the cylinder. So this term just becomes negative P0 times delta V. So, so if you observe, this just cancels out with this term over here. And the other term is going to be P1 plus P2 by 2 multiplied by, again, S times x2 minus x1, we can write as delta V. So let's just determine what is the value of this term in terms of the known variables. Well, let's just expand delta V first. So P1 plus P2 over two multiplied by, now the delta V is just the difference of volumes in both the states. So, which is V2 minus V1. It was given that the length ratio, which is L2 by L1 was eta. So the length of the spring increased by eta was given in the question. It's not the extension ratio, but the length ratio that was given. Okay, now if the length ratio is eta, then so is the volume ratio. So V2, I can just consider it as eta times V1. So this just becomes eta minus one times V1. The value of P1 and P2, we can figure it out using the state equations, right? So I'm gonna take the eta minus one over to outside and P1 V1 is gonna be nr T1, okay? And now in order to figure P2 V1, we can substitute instead of V2, we can substitute eta multiplied by V1 over here. So P2 V1 is going to be nRT2 over eta. So the second term is going to be nRT2 over eta. Okay, so that is basically it um, because now we have everything in terms of the known quantities. Now all we have to do is just substitute it back. Okay, so now, uh, so now if you use the value of R, universal constant as 8.3 joules per mole Kelvin, so you will get the answer to be around 1520 joules. So now in the given answer key, there won't be a two here. Okay, so everything else is correct, but there won't be a two here because the factor R by two is just taken outside. Okay, so yeah, that was it for this question, guys. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below. Do like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed. That's it. Thanks for watching.